This is the second video for section 3.1 on identification numbers. In this lecture, I'll be talking about errors and digits. As we talked about in the previous lecture, we use ID numbers all the time in our daily lives. And what we want to do is have a system that detects when an ID number is invalid. And what we're going to have is a system of rules that our ID numbers have to follow. And if we find a number that doesn't follow the rule, then we know that that can't be the correct ID number. The purpose of the rules is to try to detect errors that can happen when we enter our account number. Let's imagine that we're calling a customer service line to ask a question about our account. The system prompts us to enter in our account number, and let's just say that that account number is 123456. What are the kinds of different errors that can happen when we try to enter that account into our keypad? Well, one very common type of error is called a substitution error. So a substitution error is when one of the digits in our number is replaced by another digit, but all of the other digits are correct. So for example, our account number is 123456, and if when we're typing it in, we accidentally type 123476, then we've committed a substitution error. Instead of a five in that fifth position, we entered a seven. And this is the most common, by far, the most common type of error that happens with these ID numbers. 80% of all ID number errors are these substitution errors. Less common, but still fairly common error is called a transposition error. So a transposition error occurs when two adjacent digits are reversed. So in this example, our ID number is 123456, and if when we're typing it in, we accidentally type 123546, we've done a transposition error. So the four and the five are supposed to be next to each other in that order, and instead we swapped them and did five four instead. So less common, but still about 10% of all errors that occur are these transposition errors. Even less common, but still happens, is what's called a jump transposition error. So it's like a transposition error in that we're swapping the positions of two digits, but this time, instead of the two digits being next to each other, like they are for a transposition error, this is when the digits are separated by a digit in between. So again, our ID number 123456, if we entered that as 125436, what we've done is we've swapped the three and the five, which were not next to each other, but they were separated by a digit in between. So that's fairly rare, but still something that is going to be something that we want to think about. Now we can immediately see that all of those errors that we talked about, and there are other kinds of errors, even less common errors, you know, lots of different ways that we can mess up putting in a number, but those are the three most common types. And we can immediately see that they're incorrect because we know the real ID number. We know that it's supposed to be 123456, and so anything you type in that isn't 123456, we know that's wrong. But imagine that you are the customer service line that you called, right? They don't know what your real ID number is. All they know is what you typed in, right? So if you type in 123476, that substitution error that we talked about, how are they supposed to know that that seven isn't correct? So that's the idea that we're trying to think about. We don't know the real number, but is there a way that we can tell that what we're seeing, what we're given by the customer, right? Again, we're putting ourselves in the company's shoes. Can we tell that that's not correct? So how do we do that? Well, the most common way to do this is what we're using what's called check digits. And these are extra digits that are attached to the ID number that are only used for checking that the ID number is valid. And there are lots of different check digit systems, and we're going to study several of them. And some of them are secret, right? There are some systems that companies don't want you to know about, don't want you to know how they work, because if you did know how they worked, then you could use them to create fake ID numbers. So some of these are, are proprietary. But the ones that we're going to talk about, those are public knowledge. Okay, so let's think about a very simple ID number system, just so we can get the hang of how this error detection works. So let's suppose that we have a company that sells phone cards, and each card comes with an account number. And here's the, the rules for the ID number system. And typically the rules come in sort of two pieces. There's a format, which we talked about in the previous lecture, which just says, okay, how long is the ID number? How many letters, how many numbers, right? You know, what, what's, what does an ID number look like visually? In this case, we're gonna assume that our ID numbers are six digit numbers. And our validity, right, this is gonna be the checking part now, is gonna be the rule that the sum of the digits in the account number is 20. So you add up all the digits, and if you get 20, then the number is valid. So that's the rule that the ID number has to follow. Okay, so one of the things we're gonna to wanna to do is to check that a number is valid. So somebody calls into our company, and we ask them for their account number, and they type in 516224. And we wanna use our system to determine whether or not that's a valid ID number. We know it's six digits long, so it fits the format. Does it follow the validity rule? 
So we add up all those digits, 5 plus 1 plus 6 plus 2 plus 2 plus 4, and that all adds up to 20. 20 is what it's supposed to add up to, so that's going to be a valid number. So how does this help us? So now if that same customer had called again to try to make their phone call, and this time they entered their account number as 517224, remember their real account number is 516224, but we don't know that they type in 517224, how would we tell that they messed up? It's still a six digit number, but when we run our check where we add up all the digits to see if it adds up to 20, this time it doesn't add up to 20. So we know something is wrong. We know that that cannot be a valid ID number. So that can't be the customer's real ID number because we only give out ID numbers where the digits all add up to 20. So we don't know maybe exactly what is wrong. We can't necessarily fix the error, but we can prompt the customer to say, hey, you messed something up. We detected a problem. Why don't you try again? So there are errors that we don't catch though. So again, the real customer ID number in this example is 516224. But if the customer types in 561224, committing a transposition error, the one and the six have switched places. Well, it's still six digits long, so it fits the format. And now when we do our computation, when we add up all those digits, it adds up to 20. We didn't catch this error. And so the problem with that is now maybe somebody else in our system has the number 561224. And maybe now what's going to happen is that other person's account is going to get charged and this is going to cause us a problem. So it's not a good thing if there's an error that we didn't catch, right? We want to have a more robust system that's capable of catching more kinds of errors. And those are the kinds of systems we're going to be talking about later on in this course. Okay, so let's just break down valid versus invalid and correct versus incorrect. Okay, so correct just means, yes, that is the real number that corresponds to that person, place, thing, concept, whatever the number is representing. Incorrect means that it's not the correct number. Valid means that the number follows our rules. It has the correct format and whatever computation, whatever thing we do to check to see if the number works, this number follows those rules. And then invalid would mean that the number doesn't follow the rule. So in our example earlier where the digits added up to 21 instead of 20, that was an example of an invalid number. But the next example where we swapped two digits and even though that number was wrong, the digits still added up to 20, that was a valid but incorrect number, which means we had an undetected error. There was an error that happened, but we weren't able to tell using our system, we weren't able to tell that that error had occurred. So in the substitution example where the digits added up to 21, we did detect that error. That wasn't the correct number, and we did our check and the things added up to 21, and so that was us able to tell that an error had occurred. But it's not possible for a number to be both correct and invalid. You're not going to be issued an invalid number by the company, right? The company is only going to create ID numbers that satisfy their own rules. So keep these words in mind, right? It can get confusing when you're thinking about correct versus incorrect and valid versus invalid. And those are going to be words that we're going to keep using as we go forward.